six to 10,000 fishermen are estimated to work on the lake today. Before the dam was built, there were only a few hundred of them. They come from Fayum, the Delta, or Middle Egypt. Hardly any are from around here. Many of them live in temporary camps, on islets or along the shores. They stay three to six months before returning to visit their families a few weeks and then coming back. The creation of the lake has not only changed the lives of these fishermen, it has also radically altered those of countless types of fish. Some have adapted and multiplied, while others have dwindled. Tilapia make up most of the catch. It is the species that has most benefited from the transformation of a river habitat into a lake habitat. We also find other types, like the bottlenose fish or the Nile carp, but they remain in the minority. Tiger fish, which used to be plentiful in the flowing waters of the Nile, have practically disappeared. These predatory fish, like the Nile perch as well, have great commercial value. They've suffered from overfishing and the change in their aquatic habitat. Most fishermen work in the cores, but some also cast their nets in the deep waters in the middle of the lake at sundown. At dawn, they pull them up with their catch. These fish are dried, salted, and sold exclusively in Egypt. There are now three small ports on the western coast of the lake, Aswan, Garf Hussein, and Abu Simbel. Fishermen come to deliver their catch or stock up on ice. When they are too far from port, some fishermen give their fish to a fridge boat that comes to collect their catch. After an auspicious period in the 1980s, the number of fish caught today falls short of what was expected. According to experts, almost half of the fish are missing. Today is our seventh day out, and we've barely collected one ton. The zone we're covering doesn't contain many fish and fishermen are catching fewer and fewer of them. Before, the fish were a lot bigger, but now fishermen are using nets with finer mesh to catch smaller fish. That has obviously caused a reduction in fish. For Egyptian wildlife, the lake has become a sort of El Dorado. Fish, birds, and crocodiles have all made the most of this new source of life in the heart of the desert. A handful of men have been entrusted to watch over and protect this immense artificial reservoir. Haisam Ibrahim is a ranger and bird specialist.
Professor Gamal El Shabrawi is an expert in aquatic plant life and lake sediment. Whenever they can, the two of them survey the huge expanse of water to assess the quality of the environment, possible changes, and overall health of the lake. The lake's ecosystem is still in its infancy in terms of evolution. Normally, it takes hundreds or even millions of years to strike a balance. Lake Nasser is one of the first large-scale man-made lakes and is a model and benchmark for those that have followed. Which species have disappeared and which have benefited from the transformation of a river habitat into a lake habitat? This winter, Haysom is trying to count the number of birds present on the lake. Even a partial census is important for measuring the evolution of this brand new ecosystem. After the construction of the high dam, the habitat changed from a, a, a river to be a, a lake. So the water began to uh, fill all the holes around the area and the habitat changed very dramatically and um, this really uh, provide good habitats for lots of birds. Um, birds uh, migrate from uh, Europe and they follow specific pathway. Um, and one of them is like uh, flying over the river Nile to the south. And Lake Nasser is a fantastic area for them to rest, to feed, and then continue their way. Thanks to the work of Hysom and volunteer ornithologists, over 130 species of birds have been recorded on the lake. The arrival of migratory birds in winter coincides with a seasonal drop in water level. The lower waters reveal many insects and larvae that they feed on. But some of them like to spend the winter over here, but they don't feed. They spend the winter and then return back to Europe, like ducks species, wijun, uh, shoveler, teals. Also the weather, the black tail, the good way to uh, common sunbiber, wood sunbibers. So Lake Nazar is very important, not only for the wintering species, but also for the summer uh, visitors who came from Africa to the north. Like the pink-backed pelican, which has taken up residency here more permanently. Or even the African pied wagtail, which has settled in little by little and now breeds on the lake. The results Hysum has observed in the field tend to show that certain endemic species, such as the Egyptian goose, which was endangered before the lake was created, have greatly benefited from this new environment. The number now is increasing and they are doing very well breeding on the lake. And this is one of the good things which Lake Nasser do for birds. <laughs> 